Greetings and welcome to In-Depth from DK Rostow. Word coming to hand is that the Caribbean Examination Council, or CXC, will be suspending four subjects at the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate, or CSEC level, and the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Exam, or CAPE levels. Now, the subjects are Mechanical Engineering, Agricultural Science, Double Award, Green Engineering, as well as Electrical and Electronic Engineering and Technology. Now, to speak specifically to what this can mean uh, for agriculture, we are speaking with International Agricultural Consultant, Mr. Riyad Mohammed. Mohammed, how are you doing, sir? Good day. How are you doing? Good so far. Really good so far. Okay, really good so far. But I'm wondering, at first blush, when you see, okay, well, this is going to be taken off, and I'm thinking specifically about the Agricultural Science Double Award. What What are some of the things that you, you start to think about? D, when I read this last night, it was like a horror story. I started to think about what is happening with food production and nutrition security now. I started thinking about five years from now, 10 years from now, 5, 10, 15, 20. Even when my daughters grew, um, grew up, I was like, hey, what's going on here? There's no food security plan in place. You know, how could a statement like this be made? And now it's been made public for us to consume. You know, and that is not something I really want to accept, to be really honest. And what is interesting, though, and I say that because people didn't necessarily go to school for subjects like this at a point in time um i do think that is something that you would have done even though you've been so involved in agriculture uh um how how do we make that that link um because even though is not something that you would have been going to school for it was something that you were doing so is it so answer the personal ask is it that bad it's horrible you know why because i see agriculture as a life science, I wasn't taught about agriculture in high school. I went to high school in Zuparia, um, but I always had a love for agriculture. And then my journey post um, secondary school days would have been to Ekea and then the diploma degree. Then I jumped across to UE. Then I went outside to study. You know, so that's how my journey grew and my experience grew. But you must have some formal training, education, and foundation on agriculture. Imagine. Agriculture is about food production and nutrition security. So I got so angry last night D, that I was thinking about the person that made this statement or the group. If you don't have food, how are you going to survive? If you don't have shelter, how are you going to survive? And if you don't have clothing, how are you going to survive? I mean, take our agriculture from our normal daily life. Um, what type of experience would you have? And one of the things that I also think about is the fact that... um. Yes, I get that you may be looking at low levels of enrollment, but I do not necessarily think that you have the most, like in a population, the greatest amount of people or professionals would be farmers. Now that is different. That is from that. That is different from people who, and to use Omar Dad Maharaj to um, the yardeners who who just stick something in the earth as everyone should do wherever they are, or you have a bucket, yes. or you have something doing that at home. But yes. isn't this something that is to kind of be expected in terms of kind of small amounts of enrollment? And is would it be something to actually try to work on? in terms of like dealing with the mindset and having people Definitely. thinking a little more about it. Definitely. You see, not everybody is exposed to agriculture at the commercial level. Most are exposed at the subsistence level or at the farm or household level. So that's where it should start. But if you look at, okay, you're looking at low enrollment, um, quote unquote, those are the figures that show that give us the ideas to make this decision. Now, how much people eat food in the world, um, DK? How much people in Trinidad and Tobago eat food? So do you think that you should empower students to learn more about what they consume, the environment they live in, and how they can earn an income sustainably? Think about it. That is literally what agriculture is. Where do we get pharmaceutical products from? Where do we get non-consumable products from? You know, how do we create jobs for the future? How do we increase GDP? 
what is the term food security? You know, so when I see this statement and this, this type of news, I don't know. My hands are shaking since last night. I'm not feeling too good about that. All right, so the statement has been made. Where do we go from here? And I ask that because I am hoping that there is pushback on a, on a regional level by policymakers that this, this decision will be rescinded. And, I, and I'm saying that because I'm mindful of the context or we're speaking within the context of there being uh, a movement in terms of like 20, is 25 by 25, reducing the yes. food import budget by 25% right. by the year 2025. So what, like, what, exactly. what do we do next? So you see, this was, a, I guess, in a regional decision because it's Caribbean. Now, the leaders of each country, prime ministers, the ministers of agriculture, even the associated ministers in terms of your development, uh, education, um, health, all of those voices need to be heard at this time because we need to say, you know what, we need to produce food at the local and regional level. We can't flip or chip off agriculture, education, and training at such an early developmental stage. I mean, afterwards, if you choose to specialize in another field, no problem, but you all should be educated on the basics. We as a people should be educated on the basics. What about, um, so we're thinking in a perfect world and then there's a statement that comes in short order. We're sorry, looking at it a little differently, we're going to reinstate. And this is not ne necessarily the four of them, but agriculture, look. And even like that, I need to do some more research to look at what is the difference between a double award and a single award. So we'll be doing that and trying to share that information. But um, hopefully the... This is rescinded and is available once more. Do you think it would make sense to have more schools offer it one and then also have it been have it be something that is mandated a little more? I I totally agree with that statement there, DK. Recently we must have some form of agriculture or life science at the primary school level and the secondary school level. You know, we have these incredible programs in Trinidad, Tobago, for example, the YAP program, the, the incentives and subsidies provided by the Ministry of Agriculture. But imagine having all of those good, perfect programs and all these students learning and educating, being trained, you know, getting, getting some access to land and grants and all of this business support. But they do have the foundation, a permanent foundation at the primary school level and more so the secondary school level when they can learn so much more. You know, so that's where I see a big gap in our, not just education system, but our mentorship system. Yeah. And we've been speaking kind of regionally and, and you just brought the conversation at, squarely at home. And that is something that I think I want to talk about. I was going to save it for the next half, but let us start now. So we have, we might have a big half and a small half of the conversation, but <laughs> how, how important is that foundation? Because I think, to me, I think it makes sense that individuals are thinking about this. It may not be where I go, but it should be something that is normalized so that people see it as a viable alternative. We've spoken with Alpha Sanon, we've spoken with you, we've spoken with Umadat Maharaj. And one of the things that Alpha Sanon was talking about is that many times when people hear the word farming, there is an image that comes to mind. And right. you hear them saying, I don't want to be this person who in the sun from, from day clean to night time, I don't want to be the person involved in this kind of backbreaking labor. But there's so many things that are involved in agriculture, especially the way that the wheels are turning and, yes. uh, and evolutions are taking place. I want you to talk about that a little bit and we start to talk about the foundation inside the next hour. So people just use the term agriculture very loosely. So if I go to, to just give you an idea, what is agriculture in a basic sense? So agriculture is really practicing the cultivation of natural resources to sustain human life and also to provide some of the economic and social gain, right? What it really creates is the imagination and it improves the skill set involved in planting crops, raising livestock, and even producing food via different production methods and even new technologies. So that is really what agriculture is. You know, when we say in Trinidad agriculture, you say agriculture and you're just thinking about short crops, it's not just that um, decade. It's about short crops, medium, 
long-term crops, long-term crops. That's just crop production. Then you also have livestock production. You have sheep and goat production, cattle production, broiler chicken production, layer chicken production. You have rabbit production, duck production, pig production. All of these are areas. Then you also have hydroponic type farming, vertical agriculture, aquaculture. You have apiculture. You have permaculture. You have composting methods. So everything joins into that circular economy concept. Agriculture is so huge and so impactful that just seeing this headline and reading that news, I just I, I just so upset. I was upset since last night. And now you say that and you have the wheels in my mind turning a little bit, so I'm grateful for that. Because when you talk about producing natural resources, that also makes me think of some of those longer term things that we're not even going to eat. Um, so like growing timber. Lumber, lumber, exactly. Right? Lumber is a long term asset you could utilize. Um, it's good. It's actually good to utilize land. You could use it to shade livestock. You could actually use it to add organic material to your soil and still earn revenue 30 to, 15 year, 30 to 50 years from the day of planting. So that's the impact of lumber and, and agroforestry, even further in that with ecotourism. You know, so the agriculture is not isolated at all. Agriculture is the foundation of all other aspects of society, all. And on that note, we take a short break. We are speaking with international agricultural consultant Riyad Mohammed. Stay with us. We we'll return after this. Welcome back. We are speaking with international agricultural consultant Riyad Mohammed. And the thing is, yes, the premise or the jump off point is the fact that, that there have been some uh, subjects removed from the CSEC and CAPE level examinations from the Caribbean Examination Council. But we're really looking at some of those things that we need to do. And hopefully this helps to influence responses. And I say responses versus reactions, because sometimes reactions as you hear something, you do something, and it's not, it doesn't necessarily take as much information from all corners into account as possible. But that mindset, that mindset that is needed, what do you think it is, Mr. Mohammed, from your point in terms of like just, this is something that I can be involved in, or this is something that I need to know about in, in order to make a better informed decision? So what I think really, DK, uh, is that the general population or some of the decision makers don't really understand the critical importance of agriculture or maybe their ancestors did and they forgot so let me just list a few for you in terms of agriculture we have the provision of economic stability there is the creation of jobs supporting rural communities vulnerable groups and true employment right we also through agriculture supply safe and nutritious food for everyday living, which is nutrition security. We also produce feed and food for livestock, for, for example, fodder. There are lots of different agricultural activities. We are also engaged in agricultural trade, which gives us that, that form of uh, currency that we need to import other products and even export, you know? So it goes hand in hand. It's not just only children that to be involved in agriculture. Yeah, it also contributes significantly to our gross domestic product or GDP, right? It also increases food appreciation when we teach this at the primary and secondary school level, we also are providing by a lot of raw materials as well. And it's also a source of savings, right? So agriculture keeps you fit, it keeps you healthy, it keeps you mindful, it keeps you very down to do it, very respectful, very humble to understand the various aspects of life. Even through therapy, I'm, I mean, I'm not a therapist, but touching the soil now helps you remain calm. And it actually is... It has a whole chemical analysis behind it, you know? So all of these things, when you say the word agriculture, it's linked to almost every sector in you. And I'm glad to say that because um, that is that is that has been my experience as well in terms of like f literally feeling different. Uh, after being in the yard, barefoot, dealing with some plants and that, yeah. that humbling thing, <laughs> it is real. But even yeah. looking, and I want to go back to the anecdotal experience of one of my uncles who taught and looking at the difference between knowledge for knowledge sake in a very theoretical sort of way versus practical knowledge. There was a math equation where um, they wanted 
to look at areas. So they were asking how many plots of land can you get if you have this by this. So I think they wanted you to divide uh, 15 by three to get five. So the answer would have been five plots. And there was a young man who was involved in agriculture, he grew up farming, and he said you'll get four plots to plant. And then the exactly. last one, you will use it for to break it up for infrastructure drainage. Infrastructure for drainage. For drainage. Right? Infrastructure, drainage, roadways, um, washrooms, um, sheds, security booth, foot bath, all of these things. And so the practicality of it. And the, so the question is, who more, who, who more right? Because he got that five. But he actually the spoke is, to... The, the theoretical aspect to agriculture is necessary, but it's a start. That's why you would see, like on my missions across the last couple of years, what I focus on professional development courses. I'm not saying that a degree is not important. It's very important, very relevant. You learn a whole set of other research skills and all of those things at the tertiary education level, but I focus on professional development. So at the business, I'm going to teach you a skill or actually own your skills and show you how you could enjoy what you do, live life happily, and make money at the same time. So it's really narrowing down and crafting the innovation within each of these individuals. That is actually touching person by person. And I'm, once again, I'm making the point that the conversation has kind of encompassed the region and as affected by the Caribbean Examination Council. But in terms of bringing it directly home to Trinidad and Tobago, because we've been seeing that there is this push uh, by the education ministry looking at tech work subjects. We've been seeing these programs that have been coming out of my DNS that are looking at producing new farmers because we Amazing. always look Amazing. at we, we always look at the fact that um the cohort of farmers is in the main a very age a very ageable one. So if we're not literally and pun intended growing new farmers, what are we going to be doing? But exactly. Talk but talk to me about the potential benefits of someone entering those tech voc vocations or tech voc subjects or the MyDNS agricultural programs after going through an agricultural science or having that level already built into them so that somebody doesn't need to start from scratch. Right. So after that primary school experience, you have the secondary school experience. Then you jump in that nice, perfectly suited YAP program, um, partnering with also the Ministry of Agriculture. So that experience, I have a few students who joined the last couple of years who had the recommendations. So, and they came out so sharp that I could take them now as interns to work in the company. You know, and so these are some of the things that they learn, you know, how to understand, how to grow food. So you understand what in terms of soil, um, sunlight, rainwater management, drip irrigation systems. You understand business development skills. So you understand how to produce safe and nutritious food. You understand how to market that food. You understand how to do business planning. Then you start to connect all the dots in terms of doing a whole SWOT analysis or pestle analysis in terms of understanding the strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats of your of your business. Then even match that now with the political, economic, social, technological advances in your field of study. Right. And what is most important. There are mentors on these programs. And even more important than that, you get a network with your peers. Those are your peers that you're going to survive and thrive with for the next maybe 50 or 50 years in and out of the country. You all will be the leaders of tomorrow. So that's where I believe that I don't want that disconnect to happen. I, I, at all, at all, at all. We must have continuity and enforcement in our cultural education and trade. And so, Mohammed, I tell you, when I saw some of these things coming out, like the Youth Agricultural Homestead Project, the Shade oh. House Project, oh, I want oh. I was singing, I was singing Kelvin Hutchin, oh how I wish I was a child again, because yes, I was too exactly. old to apply. But the good thing exactly. is that people who are in that age bracket, they saw or they see the value so that yes. every time, every time a new cohort is advertised, it is oversubscribed. But I think it is um so important. But, and also, lastly, before we go, I'd like you to speak to the importance of being able to connect those dots. Um, because one of the things I was thinking about, as opposed to just saying, okay, well, it doesn't make as much money as we would like it to, this is agriculture. 
um, that level of saving that you don't have to spend because you are producing inside. Uh, it feels as though it puts, it puts us in a more of an advantageous position. But what what is that? If we wanted to wrap up I, this conversation, totally. you have a you have a minute you have a minute yeah. with closing arguments, thanks. Um. So what I would want is to the leaders of the population or the Caribbean to join forces. Don't fight. Let's collaborate. Let's build our agricultural sector, build the education sector. Um. Show that from program to program or education to education level, we are synced. Right, and not separated. That's exactly what I would want. And you know, engage the private sector. We are always here to help. Yeah, so that's my closing remarks, Sam. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you as well. We just spoke with a strategic, well, strategic planning, business, and all kind of thing, regional and international, international agricultural consultant, Riyad Mohammed, looking at trending developments. And on behalf of the entire TTT news team, this has been in depth with me, DK Rosta. Thank you so much for joining.